Shalom everyone. I get a lot of questions about who's going to be in the rapture, who's going to miss the rapture. So if you miss the rapture, now what? The world we live in has changed. Civility and communication seems to be a thing of the past. There was a time not too long ago when people could discuss any topic and agree to disagree over a cup of coffee or, or a meal without arguing or feeling threatened by the other interlocutor. These days are gone. They're gone. Additionally, there are topics that always seem to be uh, <clears throat> more controversial than others. One such topic is the rapture of the believers by Yeshua. By the way, if you appreciate my videos, please subscribe, hit notification, give us a, a thumbs up, and share with others. I'm really counting on you for a better exposure to the truth. Thank you in advance. Now, some people believe that there is no such thing as a rapture, while others firmly believe in the event, but are arguing about the timing of such an event, and if it will be before, during, or in where during, different, different locations, or even after the tribulation. In other words, there are more views about the rapture than we can shake a stick at. Now, I don't intend to write another article or do another video defending the pre-tribulation, premillennial rapture. I will state my position from the start and assert that, that's what I believe, that the rapture will occur before the time of Jacob's trouble, the Great Tribulation, before that begins. Taking a pre-tribulational and premillennial position, when we read a key scripture found in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, and I quote, In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. We still need to explain what the last trumpet is all about in that passage in 1 Corinthians. Many have argued that this is a reference to the last trumpet in God's prophetic program, that is to say, the uh, last trumpet in Revelation eleven fifteen. In 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty two, the subject is the church being caught up in the sky to be with Yeshua. The trumpet of God's grace and God's mercy sounds to announce that event. It also connects to the Tekiah Gedola, or the great trump, or the last trumpet of the feast of Rosh Hashanah. Now, careful now. This does not necessitate for the rapture to happen on Rosh Hashanah. It could, but it doesn't have to since no one knows the day or the hour. It could happen on Rosh Hashanah, but not because it's Rosh Hashanah, just because that's when God decides it would happen. But we don't want to set dates. On the other hand, the trumpet in Revelation 11.15 is within a different context. It relates to a fallen, rebellious world and the judgment of sinners and is part of a progressive series of judgments during the Great Tribulation. We are looking at two very different trumpets, one based on God's mercy and the other based on His judgment. Based on the biblical premise that the rapture is an event that will only include those, being Jews and Gentiles, who have placed their trust in the death and resurrection of Yeshua for their sins, only believers will be taken up at that time. Many will be left behind. And whoever is left behind will have to deal with the consequences triggered by the Great Tribulation, one way or another. And it's not going to be pretty. The Great Tribulation, also known as the time of Jacob's trouble, as we read in Jeremiah 30, verse 7, will last seven physical years as we read in Daniel 9, 26, 27. In the beginning, things will appear uh, to, to be under control on planet Earth. It is very likely that news and government agencies will hide the sudden disappearance of millions of people behind the cloak of an alien abduction. Keep in mind that anyone who is a believer will disappear at the moment of the rapture a moment that nobody can schedule ahead of time. Any believer in Yeshua, old or new, carnal or spiritual, will be taken at that rapture. What happens 
is going to be very, very interesting. It's kind of scary for those left behind. What happens when an airline pilot or train conductor disappears without any warning because they were a believer? What about the myriad of, of motorists that will also vanish at the same time? Whatever the reason people left behind will be given, they will still be in the midst of much chaos on earth. At this point, a man will rise for the occasion and keep things under control, or so it will appear, giving people much hope, even hope for peace on earth. In the Bible, this man is known as the Antichrist, Revelation 13. This charismatic, likable, uh, and convincing man will inspire people to follow and trust him until he demands to be worshipped as God himself at the midpoint of the tribulation and desecrates the temple that would have been rebuilt in Jerusalem by that point. During this time, people will have a choice to make a very important choice, a choice that will have eternal consequences. If you are left behind, if I'm talking to you right now and, you're left, and you, you don't believe you're left behind, you will take the mark of the beast or you won't. What will be your choice? Will you decline to accept it? The beast deputy, known in the Bible as the false prophet, will run a propaganda campaign to entice people to take the mark. Revelation 13, 11 through 18. People who did not take the mark will have severe limitations to their existence and survival. Nobody will be, uh, no, no, will be allowed to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. Revelation 13, 17. Eventually, those who decide not to take the mark will be executed. Revelation 20, verse 4. If you are left behind, it will not be too late to refuse the mark of the beast and not worship the Antichrist. But that will result in suffering great harm and dying as a tribulation martyr. It could all have been avoided at the time of the rapture. It's a choice to make today. See, today, many people make fun of the rapture and the tribulation, mentioning that, you know, these are just superstitious beliefs with no foundation, or that the Bible is a crutch used by people to help them go through life. Friends, I don't expect everyone viewing this video to agree with my views based on what I get from the Bible, or even to believe that the rapture is a literal future event that will take place right before the Great Tribulation, which is also a literal seven-year event. But in the future, if you find yourself on the other side of an event where millions of people have disappeared all over the planet at the exact same moment, don't believe for a moment, don't believe for a second that aliens got them. This is ludicrous. If you find yourself left behind, you will have the most important choice of your life to make. Will you succumb under the pressure of the Antichrist? Or will you reject his lies, effectively signing a death warrant from the world's perspective but signing a new lease on eternal life in God's presence from the Word's perspective. The world against the Word. That's what we're looking at right now. The best way to move forward is to trust Yeshua today, but it will not be too late to accept, follow, and serve Yeshua even during the tribulation. It won't be easy, but it will still be possible. You'll be better off dying at the hand of the Antichrist as you are embracing Yeshua than taking the mark of the beast, enjoying false peace for a few years, and end up in the lake of fire and brimstone in unbearable physical torment for all eternity. The choice is yours. All this being said, if you die before all this takes place and you still are rejecting Yeshua and His free gift of salvation, you are still destined for the same lake of fire and brimstone. Undoubtedly, the best time to embrace Messiah is now, because nobody knows what tomorrow is made of. Be blessed.